Hustle podcast, hosted by Chris Kiblin. Real hustle, real people, real results. What's up, man? Hey, Chris. How you doing? Glad to have you back. So, Thanks for having me. I was like, all right, have to have you back. We had you on, what, probably about a year ago, right? Yeah, it was, was over, it a, little over year a year ago. ago? Yeah, I think so. I was like, and maybe. you were running for the county commission for of Manatee at that yep. time. Mm-hmm. You just got started, and yep. now congratulations! Thank you're, you so much. You're the new commissioner or com- yes. county commissioner, right? County commissioner yep. for Manatee. Mm-hmm. So I really wanted to have you back because this is kind of an exciting thing. First of all, you beat out somebody that's been in, in that that spot for what. 16 years. 16 years. Yeah. So, I mean, so obviously it wasn't, I mean, you had a tough opponent, right? Of course. Yeah, so, she was really tough. But I kind of first, before we get into some of this stuff, because my biggest question when it comes to politics and it comes to what you've done is how did you get started? How do you, like, walk me through the process of, okay, all right, this is how I decided I wanted to run for this. Mm-hmm. Then how do you register to say that you want to run for that? Because, like, the, I, you know, I don't think many people know how you really get started. Yeah, so, um, you know, when it comes to running for any public office, you know, I truly believe that you have to have a calling on your life. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just not like one day I wake up and it's like, oh, I want to run for public office. Now, I know there there are some people that kind of, Prepare their whole life for that, right? Right, um, but it wasn't something that I ever was, really yeah, thought it was about. Like, right? Exactly, it wasn't really like something that I was preparing my whole life to be a politician. Um, so I believe that I got a, you know a complete call in my God to do this, and um, you know it was a difficult decision because you know at that time it was like. All right, do you really want to do this? Because I knew that like it was going to take a lot of sacrifice. I knew mm-hmm. it was going to take a lot of hard work, and uh, it took me about six months before I said, "Okay, I'm going to go ahead and file." Um, so, you know, it was uh, it was a lot because you know you sacrifice a lot in the process. So, how do you um, file for did become so that way you put your name on the ballot? Yeah. So essentially, you go down to the supervisor of elections. Every okay. county has one. And there's some forms that you have to fill out, and you just tell them, "Hey, I wanna, I wanna go ahead and file for a particular seat," mm-hmm. and and then your name uh, becomes, uh, well, you have to qualify okay. once you once you sign the applications. Then you have to qualify. So you can either get uh, in Manatee County. Uh, there's a certain number of petitions okay. that you have to have signed, or you can pay a qualifying fee, okay. which I roughly, I think it's roughly $5,000 for the Mantee County oh, commissioner wow. seat. Okay. Or it was 20, I believe it was 2,700, a little over 2,700 petitions signed. So that's 27 people had to sign some. 2,700 people had to sign this. Had to sign a petition saying, saying that, that I could be, be on the ballot. ballot. Gotcha. Yep. And there's a, it's a, it's a, a particular form, you know, it has their name, their address, their birth date. And then you take those petitions, which I qualified by petition. Okay. And then they take them up to the supervisor of elections. And then they kind of look over each and every one of them to make sure they're verified. Okay. Because that's what I was going to so, ask you. Did you get by petition or did you get by money? Yeah, no, I, I went by petition and got almost 4,000 petitions on. Wow. Which was a lot of work. How did you get those? Like, were you, you just know, reaching I out mean, to everybody? Just reaching <laughs> out to everybody. Um, I know I was 10 days at the Mantee County State Fair where I, I was able to get at least 1,000 of those. Wow. Um, so it's a lot of interaction. Um, I had some people that were actually helping me too that supported me that kind of went out and said, hey, can you get you know mm-hmm. X amount of petitions signed? And they would, which I think honestly, getting those petitions were a big deal because I don't know when the last time somebody that was at large. Now, I know in a specific district, they would get petition signed. It's not that many. It's like maybe 500 qualified. Um, but with mine, it's like 2,700 qualified. So you got to take that times five, take okay, that number Jesus. times five, right? Right. Um, and they have to be registered voters. Oh, wow. And so um, if there's a, if there's a, Autograph that's or signature that's 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 wrong or a birth date that they throw it out. 
Wow. So really there was sad. yeah. So I had to get at least four thousand to ensure that I got, got the, the, yeah, the, the twenty seven hundred. Yeah. So why? So we got to that part, but why? Um, Manatee County Commissioner, why did you choose that one? Yeah, you know, I see a lot of things that within our county that, you know, we need to do, you know, um, going into this, we, we were about 15 years behind on our infrastructure, right? That's one reason. Okay. And so every time we sit in traffic, there's a reason why we're sitting in traffic, right? And so I saw that, hey, you know, if, if I run for county commissioner, this is something that I could really help in regards to speeding up that process, infrastructure process. The second uh, reason why was, um, you know, with everything that's going on within the last couple years, um, I recognize that, you know, we had people who, in my opinion, breached our constitution, right, with all the mandates. Like masks and that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, exactly. So... You know, and and with me, I think that if we've raised our right hand, which I have and you have, to defend the Constitution, that's essentially what I will always do for the rest of my life. And I just felt like there's a lot of elected officials that kind of overstep their boundaries, and maybe they don't they don't understand their true oath. Right. And so I felt it that it was one, my duty to, you know, actually go out and. Uh, continue to defend the Constitution of the United States of America, right, and to live in the freedom in this great state that we all live in, in Florida, too. I mean, not everybody's like us. No. You know? (laughs) It's kind of crazy. So, I mean, I think that was the main reason. And then, you know, we had secondary reasons, which is like infrastructure and things like that. I know I started off with infrastructure, but, you know, the main reason was to defend our Constitution. Because you were saying stuff that really you just— didn't believe in so that made you want to go correct it it, kind of sparked a fire in me to you know do because if what i don't want is 30 years from now look at my kids or my grandkids and say you know i had a chance to do something and i didn't do it right right okay so i wanted to make sure that i didn't have any regrets saying you know hey you know this is the country i handed you exactly you know and i want to say that hey i did everything i could do and this is where we're at if it so happens to go down that road exactly that path so so let's talk about it because you did um take somebody that was in the in that seat you took over you did beat out somebody who's been in there for 16 years yeah talk to me because this is kind of an interesting part for me this is why i really kind of wanted to also have you on the podcast is because Talk to me about the campaigning part because I know oh, yeah. I know we've talked a little bit yeah. about it and just in brief as I've run into you, mm-hmm. but like the campaigning part sounded like it was it was tough, right? Yeah, it's pretty gruesome. I mean, um, so typically in Manatee County, particularly the way that they ran campaigns was you know there's a few people that would you know donate into a campaign and then they would run mailers. Okay. okay, and mailers would match up against somebody that may be not able to raise money. And, you know, always the people that could raise the money would essentially win. Right. In my case and the case after me, um, I knew that I had to run a grassroots campaign. Nobody knew who I was. Mm-hmm. So I knew I needed to get out there. Now, I have a business background and a marketing background that kind of helped me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> in, in this process. But I knew that I had to contact people. I had to be in front of the people every day. I had to run grassroots. I had to get volunteers um, and do a lot of face-to-face interaction, which I think is the most effective when you're running for any type of campaign because what typically happens when you have that face-to-face interaction, um, they end up telling two or three more people, right. which I recognized big time. Um, and then raising money, right? Um, you got to raise money. So in order for me to make an impact or, you know, have a foothold in the campaign, I had to raise some money to get my message out. Right. And, you know, I ran, my first fundraiser was pretty successful. I think we raised like $36,000, wow. which was awesome. Um, that kind of gave me a jump start in doing what I needed to do. Uh, to really get my name out there. And then I started running like uh, Target. I started early. Okay. I started really early. Typically, people don't start spending money as early as I did, <laughs> but I knew that I had to continue to 
get that traction because I knew they were going to have negative ads against me. Um, so I needed people to judge me before um, the negative stuff, stuff started. Started right, <clears throat> and I needed to know, I needed to make sure that people knew who I was before the negative started coming out. Um, and so I started spending money a lot earlier than most people. And um, what were you spending it on? What kind of stuff? Uh, digital ads, like Facebook. Was, yeah, or like I, I was spending a lot of money on Facebook and spending some money on some other things, but. Um, I knew how to run Facebook ads, you know, and uh, realize that, you know, this was my name was getting out there big time. You know, I started recognizing it when I was going out in town um, that people started rec recognizing, recognizing me. <laughs> yeah, because of the ads that I was that running. That was the thing is like, I mean, I had you on the show mm -hmm. and then people would that saw you on the show would like I'd run into. They'd be like, hey, what's going on with that guy, Jason? Yeah, I, I saw him like he's out <laughs> running everywhere. He's like, I saw his name somewhere. And, you know, so, I mean, your name was growing quite a bit in our community. Correct. I mean, you know, it's funny because, you know, we feel kind of like a big little city here. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's small enough that everybody kind of knows who everybody else is, mm -hmm. especially, I hate to say this, but even like, maybe not, not that you say it, but in the real estate world, which we both are part mm -hmm. of, um, you know, everybody does know everybody. Um, Correct. So in that particular world, we all kind of know, um, you know, and it is still a small place here. I yeah, mean, it is. it's not, it's, you know, Bradenton and, and, and Manatee County is not that big. Yep. Um, so, you know, you would go, I'd be going to the store or whatever. And, you know, I mean, we've run into the stores all the, and each other all the time, Correct. you know? And so like, I saw your name growing quite a bit and your signs going up everywhere and, you mm -hmm. know, and it was like, you know, wow, this is really kind of cool to watch. Cause I've never, like, I've never really known anybody that went through the politic process, like yeah. they get voted in. Right. And I, I mean, I've, I've watched people, I've heard of people, I've met people, but like I've never seen anybody through the process. Mm -hmm. and it was a cool process to watch because and see what you've done and just your overwhelming support that you got because I think everybody realized it was time for a change. Yep. And they realized, look, we can't keep going down the same road that we've been going, right? Correct. And so, and I think that's the same message we get in Florida. Yeah, um, no, I mean, yeah, so. yeah, with the results that happened. I mean, and not just that, I mean, now we have. Uh, a seven zero conservative board in Manatee County. We had Amanda Ballard, who was in District Two, who has been heavily a Democratic district, and it was flipped the first time since nineteen ninety four. Wow, that's a long time. <laughs> so I mean, that was almost thirty years, right. right? And so, and and she won that by almost seventeen points. Jeez. She ran a pretty solid grassroots campaign as well. And so that just tells me that grassroots, like, it works. Like, I mean, it's a lot of work. I mean, if anybody's wanting to run for office, <laughs> I'm just going to let you know now, like, you're not going to be home. Uh, it's going to be late nights. Because oh, yeah. that's what I was going to ask you. I mean, you're, you know, you got a family, yeah. young, young kids. Mm -hmm. um, you're out campaigning a lot. I mean, mm -hmm. that's got to be tough on your wife. It's got to be tough yep. on your kids, yep. right? Because, I mean, you were probably out, what? I mean, every other night? Every, every night? other night. Every <laughs> night. Yeah, <laughs> so. I mean, it's a sacrifice for sure. So, like, anybody that's ever considering running for office, just know that. It's going to be a sacrifice if you have a family. It's going to be a sacrifice on your family. Your wife needs to understand, you know, hey, this is what we're getting ourselves into. You know, these, these it's going to be late nights. And when I when, and and <laughs> after the campaign, the, the, the job hasn't even started yet. Right. Now the job starts. Now, you know, for Manatee County, I mean, it's almost 420,000 people in the county. Wow. So I represent the whole county. So, like, I have to be everywhere all the time. I have to be answering to constituents all over the county. And so um, it's a lot of work, you know, and uh, but it's 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 good work. It's it's awesome, you know, and so now it's an honor and a privilege to be able to get to do this and represent people from Manatee County for sure. So, well, now I know you got your other marketing because you got your other job yeah. that you do. Will this now take priority over that job? I mean, as far as well, what you're doing I, I or think, how yeah. That so work? my main thing is, is like, I've got a couple businesses that I do. It's just not the marketing business. Okay. Um, I've also got a credit card processing business that I run as well. Uh, I think nothing takes priority. I mean, obviously, the county will always take priority um, when things need to get done. All right. Okay. First and foremost. Um, but I think with me now, it takes 
a lot more organization to ensure that I can get everything done or I just task out yeah. and hire people. <laughs> <laughs> to which, do the business that, stuff. Exactly. Right. Which, you know, is most likely that's the direction that I'm going to have to go. Right. Um, because I, I definitely, when I'm, when I'm working for the county, that's going to take a priority over a lot of the things that I'm doing. Right. You know, so. So now as far as being the county commissioner, now you're mm -hmm. in this role, you're about to be sworn in what, next week? Next Tuesday, yeah. Next Tuesday. So, and then effectively that Tuesday is when you actually start the job, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. So give us some of the job responsibilities that you will have in, in, in that world. Yeah, so, so once I'm sworn in, um, I essentially set policy for the county. I approve rezonings. I look at the overall picture of kind of what we need and try to influence um, others that are on the board to actually see the vision of, of the direction that, that we need to go. Um, I work with, you know, um, essentially the whole county, right? So, um, you know, managing uh, over a billion dollar budget. Wow. You know, so it's, it's, there's a lot that goes, goes on within the county, but, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, I'm going to be um, working with the others to ensure that, you know, our county is moving into the right direction and just essentially watching your tax dollars, making sure that we're not wasting any tax dollars. I, I know that, you know, that seems to be a, a thing of mm -hmm. the past where we've just kind of just spend just to spend. And, uh, you know, with my educational background, I think that we're going to be able to, um, see spots where money being spent maybe doesn't necessarily need to be spent. Right. And so, you know, that's essentially what I'm doing is, is kind of looking over your budget, make, making sure that our tax dollars are not being wasted. That's a big yeah. thing. I mean, that's what, you know, a lot of people, I mean, you know, because you're talking about hardworking Americans who pay mm -hmm. into taxes or whatever these taxes are. Yep. And then, you know, when it, they want to make sure that their money isn't being spent Correct. wastefully, right? So, I mean, you yep. know, because unfortunately, as a government right now, we see that as an mm -hmm. overall government, right? Um, you know, and so it, you know, on the local, and I think with what you're doing on the local level, these guys have somewhat of a hope of what's going on, you know, and hopefully we can keep growing that into where, you know, and I think even in our state level, we see that. I think, you know, with what we just seen, but overall, as far as federal government, that's another story. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, you know. And we have a really awesome opportunity for economic growth in Manatee County. I mean, I think that, I mean, we have CENTCOM up the road. You know, I think it's a great opportunity to bring companies in into the actual county to create jobs, you know, um, good paying jobs. You know, that yeah. I, I think it's just an awesome opportunity in the county. We have, you know, the the means to be able to do that. And so, you know, we have the port, which is awesome and then we have the fastest growing airport in the nation which so, i didn't i didn't even know that until you just told me that a couple of minutes ago before yeah. we started the show i had no idea that our airport was the fastest growing i know we're getting like because i remember before like you didn't even have like southwest no, here it's growing or, yeah. you know it's growing and i know it but i didn't realize it was the fastest growing one and mm -hmm. then i didn't even realize we had a port here like that's yeah. i i thought everything was up in tampa yeah i mean we have the closest uh, port to the Panama Canal and I don't we haven't used it to its fullest full capacity yet and I think that we have an opportunity to really maximize on our port and be able to you know really take that up to the next level where's the port at it's right um if you look, it's like south of 275, right there, kind of in Palmetto, like okay. west of Palmetto. Okay. Up yeah. in that area? Yeah, gotcha. northwest, yeah. Okay. So, and then we got the airport, which is growing like crazy. And that, yeah. you know, and I, like, you see more and more airlines that are now trying to come into um, our area, into the Sarasota area, mm -hmm. because I think it's just the growth that we're seeing, right? And um, I think we're one of the fastest growing communities. I know we're... Like Lakewood Ranch is one of the fastest growing. Was it um, what do they call it? The, We're almost uh, built out, believe it or not. There's two more p plots that are in Lakewood Ranch, and they're being developed right now. Once those two are developed, we're going to be fully built out in Lakewood Ranch. 
So, so now, now we're, we're looking at <laughs> par- well, we're looking at Parish area, right? right? Um, that's going to be the new North River mm-hmm. Branch, and that whole area is, is going to be an area where a lot of people are going to want to move to. Um, it's going to be up and coming, so that's an up and coming area. And it's just like they, you know, for a while there, they couldn't build them fast enough, right? Yeah. And then now it's like, okay, well, the market shifted a little bit, <laughs> but they're still coming. Um, you know, yeah. people are still coming. You know, and you still see the thing. And and I was having this conversation with somebody. And, you know, we were talking about, you know, without bringing too much politics into this, but we were talking about like other states and the reason, and we're having other states that a lot of people are trying to get out of their states to come here Mm -hmm. um, because of what we have to offer. And so, you know, we were talking about it and we were like, we're thinking and we're talking, we're like, probably some of those other states didn't do as well because they moved here. Or they moved to Texas. <laughs> yeah. You know, and yeah. so it's like, so one of the things is because we have grown a lot. I remember when I first moved here, there was no mall, there was no roundabout, there was none of this stuff. Mm-hmm. And just to watch how this area has grown, you know, and I, you know, I'm being in the mortgage world and, and seeing that real estate world, it's just like, you know, when I have conversations with people, you know, one of the things that they love about Florida is no state income tax. Yep. And so they love coming here for that. And they love talking about that. And they're like, look, I can get out of these other states with these high income t- state income taxes. And that pretty much covers my mortgage. So yeah. what I was paying in state income tax now covers my mortgage. That's kind of a, it was kind of an epiphany when I had somebody tell me that. And I was like, that's crazy. That's kind of crazy, right? So if you're paying yeah. 10, 15, 20 grand a year in state income tax, that's your mor- that could be your mortgage. What if you're you're paying you know okay so if you're paying two thousand dollars three thousand dollars a month right mm-hmm. okay what well, you're paying in state income tax is now your mortgage yep. um, you're saving all that money and so that's worse. a lot of people they look at it and they say it makes sense to move to Florida now it makes sense to get here because of just that one little piece mm-hmm. and it's pretty awesome. Well you know Governor Ron DeSantis did a great job with this state you know and what we recognize in the last you know, couple years is people moved here because of the opportunity, because of freedom, you know, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, we gained, I mean, we're getting a thousand people a day moving into Florida. That's insane. (laughs) You know, if you think about it, a thousand people, I mean, that's significant. And, you know, they're not moving. Most of them are moving to Manatee County. A lot of them are. And guess what? Fort Myers market, which was a big market has completely been destroyed so where do you think they're going going to come now they're going to come up here right so you know manatee county is is definitely a great county you know if anybody has a little bit of work ethic they can make anything happen here and that's 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 america and that's why i love it here and i love this county and i um and because you know you can you can do anything you would like to do here if you had any type of work ethic you could build a business, you know, you could become very successful here. It's just an awesome place to live. No, it's been, it did wonders for me. Like I yeah. can tell you, I mean, I came from Maryland and Baltimore and I came down here, moved <clears throat> down here in 2014 and, you know, and I got a fresh start down here and yeah. I had the work ethic yep. and it was like, okay, so I built something and it was like a game changer moving here. Mm-hmm. And so it really opened the doors for me. It really allowed me to do some great things here. And um, I see a lot of other people, like you said, that have that work ethic that have grown and grow mm-hmm. fast, um, you know? And so if you bring that like work eth- ethic that you have, this is a great place. I mean, it's a great place. It's growing. I mean, there's a lot of opportunity, whether you yep. want to start a business, a small business, big yep. business, um, you know, and it's just because of who is here. One of the things that I, I think that also maybe you touch on too is the people, the yeah. people that are moving here and the people that we have here. I could tell you, I mean, from being at different places and going to different places, we have something special. Like as far as it like is. people always like they help each other. Correct. They want to help each other. They want to yep. grow. They want to do what's best for everyone, not just mm-hmm. themselves, mm-hmm. but it's, it's like, it is a melting pot here, right? Yeah, it and is. so, you know, the thing is, is like we have so many different people from all, you know, when's the last time you've heard somebody who's actually born and raised in Florida? It, it doesn't happen very often. Correct. And so they're moved here. So like they've been displaced and now they're here. And it, and I don't know what it is and maybe it just kind of changes them, but 
everybody is friendly. Everybody wants to welcome them, mm-hmm. and you know, and so it's it's a different atmosphere here, and I think that attracts a lot of people too. No, it really does. I think that everybody has goals and. Everybody's being helped to achieve those goals and everybody's linking together and I see it all the time And it's just an awesome thing to see for sure So what's a f- so how's it feel to be like, okay, you're now officially a politician. Does yeah, that sound no. weird? <laughs> yeah, because yeah, like, you does. said it and they were like a yeah, politician. No. I'm like, well, no, that's this no, kind I mean, of <laughs> I mean, you know, I never really want to consider myself a, a politician I want to consider myself more a servant of the people mm-hmm. and because that's what I am and I just want to make sure that, you know, uh, things that need to be done, that the constituents want to get done, that we get them done. Right. Right. And that we're making the best decisions uh, that we can possibly make. Because, you know, you, you're you going to have two sides. Things are going to pull you. And I think, honestly, it just kind of goes, you know, when you're making a decision, make the right decision uh, that you believe in your heart and you just keep moving forward. Um but, man, I, you know, it really hasn't hit me yet. You know, I mean, next Tuesday, I swear in, I, and I'm sure it'll hit me then. Right. But I will tell you that, you know, this is going to be um, the biggest honor, uh, one of the biggest honors of my life that I, that I could possibly do is serve the people. And I enjoy it. I right. really do. Um, you know, during all the hurricane relief, we were able to, you know, you guys did uh, link a lot up, of stuff. Provide like six. I, I mean, was able to deliver you know six truckloads of just supplies to people here in Manatee County, and it was just a blessing to be able to get to do that, um, and and join arms with that. But you know, it's it's going to be an honor to serve the people, and that's what I'm here to do. You know, I'm here to serve the people. So, so I mean that. So where are you, not that I'm, so do you see yourself like staying in politics as a career you know, politician? I don't know. You don't you know? know? I mean, is this going to be a I long-term mean, thing? We I don't be know. like, okay, I one mean, day I'm be taking like, it, I'm taking it Jason one day. for governor. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I think the main thing is you, you got to take these things one day at a time. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't have, like, my heart's not like, oh, I got to be this other position. No, right now I got to serve as a county commissioner. And that's kind of where my focus is at is, um, how I can make the life better for our constituents here in Manatee County and really hone in and focus on that because I know I know in, there's politicians that they're doing this so they can they can step up to the next position right. or you know they're doing it so they can get promoted or whatever it may be that's not where my heart's at my heart is is sincerely to serve the people of this county to make sure that you know I serve them to my best capability that I can serve them in and ensure that you know moving forward that we have an amazing place to continue to live in. And saying, I wish more politicians or people yeah. would be, are like you. Because the thing is, it's like, look, you're here, you got elected in the office for a reason, right? Correct. And it's to serve the people. I mean, yep. that's your job. That's and I mean, it. that's why you got you got elected, mm-hmm. is to serve the people. And, you know, and a lot of times that's not what it is, right? I yeah. mean, politics is like, you're just like, that's politics, right? Yeah. You know, and, and I hate to say it, it could be on both sides. It doesn't matter which side you're talking Correct. about. And so, like, you know, you got this politics, these politics, and they're just blah. And nobody wants yeah. to work together. Nobody wants to work for the people. And you people. can't get anything done. And you can't, yeah, right. Yeah. And so it's like, you know, well, you know, but we're here for the people. You're here for the Correct. people, right? They're the ones entrusting our government to make sure that they do the right things, to make sure that we have the right stuff that's taken care of, mm-hmm. you know, and, and that's why we voted for whoever it is that we voted for, whether you're on the left or you're on the right, you know, and that's the ultimate thing. And I think that is one of the biggest things that politics drives me nuts about is that – Look, you are in government. You've been elected into. It's about the people. It's about the U.S. Right? right. It's about all of us. Yeah. Not, you know, doing what's best for all of us. Not mm-hmm. just doing what's best for you, or doing right. best what your beliefs are in. Right. right. Doing best what's for everyone. And you know, and I sit here and I watch. You know, I've never been into politics more than I've ever been in the last three years. And I'm like, <laughs> I've watched politics more than I ever have thought I'd be into. Correct. It, you yeah. know, and it's like it's just like, but. You know, like you said, I mean, we, you know, we both raised our right hand and sworn in and, you know, and we, we were, we made that obligation that, you know, we're here to fight for our country and the Mm -hmm. freedom that it has, you know, and for the people. And so at the same time, I think we, some people forget about that, Yeah. you know, and people forget about 
all this, the, 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 it's about the people. It's about Correct. our freedom. Yeah. And, you know. Well, and, that's the whole reason why. I mean, the primary role in an elected official is to what? Is to protect the rights of the people. There's a reason why you raise your right hand mm -hmm. to defend the Constitution. Is because it's to protect people's rights, right? That's Period. why we are the USA. Exactly. Right? And everything else is secondary to that. And I think that we've lost touch with a lot of politicians who who have lost touch in what their primary role is. Mm -hmm. And that will always be the forefront of my mind. And any decision that I make, I have to ask myself, how does this line up with the Constitution? If I vote yes, does it breach it? If I vote no, does it breach the Constitution and this, these people's rights? And that's the number one reason why everybody's in office. And a lot of people don't know that. Know that. Like, you'll ask a lot of people, you know, what is the role of an elected official? And they'll say, to, to hear to the right, or to hear to what people want them to do, or, you know, to do what people want them to do, the people, right? right. And it's actually to protect your rights mm -hmm. first, <laughs> all rights. And then everything else is secondary to that. Right. So as long as you keep that as your number one mission is to protect rights, you can't go wrong, period. Because you're telling me if you, if you, if you say something in regards to breaching somebody's rights, you're, gonna, you're essentially telling me you need to breach the Constitution of the United States of America, and I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm not going to. I've seen the blood that's been shed for it. I'm not about to start you know, breaching the Constitution because you have an opinion on something. Period. Right. That's just where I'm at with it. And I think a lot of people forget that, right? Yeah. A lot of people died for that. Correct. And so, you know, a lot of people gave up their lives or they gave up, you know, even if you're, you, you, you gave up your family time or you gave, oh. you know, you've been, you know, let's say you were um, deployed or whatever it is, and, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, and so like, that's the thing. There's a lot of people that gave up a lot for that. That's right. And I think we forget that. And mm -hmm. I think we forget that, you know, I hate, I don't want to get my soapbox, but like, I forget that we are, <laughs> that our freedom, you know, and what we, what we gave for, you know, what everybody gave over throughout the U.S. history Correct. to be where we are today. Mm -hmm. You know, if we look at some of these other countries, you know, what's going on in those countries and it compared to what we have here. And it's like, dude, what is wrong with you? I just sometimes, you know, I love people and I, sometimes I just want to <laughs> shake them. I'm like... <laughs> What is wrong with you? You don't realize how good you've had it. I've yeah. been to those third world countries. Correct. I've gone to those cities where like they're starving. They have mm. no food. They can't afford shoes. I've done yeah. that kind of stuff. And I'm like, you don't realize how good you got yeah. it. And I'm like, and you're bitching about this? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I just, it makes no sense to me. And, you know, and, and that's the frustrating part, you know, and it's like, you know, we're here and we, sh we need to keep our freedom and our liberty that I think most people don't get. Well, it's precious. It's very it, precious. It, it is. And we have, we are very lucky to have been born or be part of something that is where we are. Correct. Yeah. You know? I mean, yeah, and everybody, you know, some people thank you for, you know, thank us for our service. I said, you know what? It's an honor and a privilege to serve this country because it truly is. You know, when you realize what we have here and the opportunities that we have here, you know, it's an honor and a privilege to get to serve this country. Because if so. you think about it, I mean, you know, if you, if you think about what else is out there in the world except for the U.S., nobody's like us. Mm -hmm. Nobody. Mm -hmm. And nobody has the freedom we have. Nobody has the freedom that we can sit here and say, I can go cut hair or I can go work on a car or Thank I can go you. do this exactly. or I can go there or I yeah. can go move to Texas or I can go move. Yep. They just, this is what's great about our country. Mm -hmm. And if you start taking those rights away and you try to do other things, then you're making us just like the mm -hmm. others, other countries that it's are true. out there. It's true. So again, I'll get off my soapbox. No, you're good. You're good. I love <laughs> so, it. I love um, it. <laughs> you know, and so, but so I want to kind of get back a little bit to your campaign because I was thinking yeah. about this too. So, you know, one of the things that I always run that I that we see in politics is you were talking about like um, 
the negative publicity and yeah. saying stuff yeah. to you. So what uh, came out of that? I, I mean, I mean, cause I like, like look, some... I know you pretty well. At least yeah. I think I do. I'm like, <laughs> what the hell did he's got that it really could be negative? Oh, wow. He was a sniper in the Marines. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, when it comes to the negative campaigning, I mean, there's a strategy behind the negative campaigning. A lot of times when they're running negative ads on you and a lot of them, mm -hmm. they know that they're behind. Okay. So they they just, you know, a lot of times they'll come up with things, <laughs> you know. You're like, where did and, this come uh, from? I'm like, yeah. I'm just be and like so and so what happens is is they're trying to knock down your credibility. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we'd already built up our credibility so much that you know, by like I said, by the time they were hitting us with negative ads, they weren't working. And because of that, the results shown that, you know, in a three way race, we were able to win, you know, over almost sixty three percent of the vote. Um I you think, crushed I it. think yeah, I think um I think uh uh my opponent I had two other opponents. One came in at twenty five and the other one came in at I think at like uh thirteen percent. Okay. So um so yeah, I mean that's you, you just kind of that just showed that the grassroots worked, that what we did worked. And um we worked really hard because like I said, I mean You were everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I mean Carol's probably gonna be the, the toughest opponent that I ever face in the you know. And coming in as a newcomer, no name recognition. Did, did they try to use that against you? Like you were brand new and you didn't really yeah, you know name they, they, and yeah, wasn't they, experienced. They kinda, yeah, exactly. I mean, they're always going to try to utilize that a more experienced mm -hmm. um, aspect in, in somebody's campaign if they've been there for a long time right. against a, a newcomer. Um, but I will say that, you know, through that whole process, especially with the negative campaigning and things that, you know, were coming out, you know, we were expecting it. I mean... Right. If you're going to run a, a, against a 16-year incumbent, it's, they're not just going to allow you to walk on in. Right. I mean, <laughs> right? They've been there for not, a while. <laughs> it's not. It's not just going to happen. And and like I, I've told Carol this, she she was the hardest opponent. She she will probably be the hardest opponent that I ever face in in my political career. And you know, she was tough. Right. And uh, you know, she she served 16 years. She did a, an amazing service while she was in, and I give respect to her for that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it was you know these campaigns. They can there's a there's a time frame in there where it gets kind of crazy with the negative ads yeah, right. and the negative mailers. How did it make you feel? You know, it, it didn't really phase me. Really? I think because I knew that I I was expecting it, right? right. That I was, was coming. Just, yeah, it didn't really phase me. I just kind of continued to stay focused. I would have been like. <laughs> I've been like cussing her out and be like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> no, it really, it really, honestly, it really did not phase me at all because I kind of was expecting it to happen. See, I wouldn't be a good politician. You know? I was just would call them up and then yeah. scream at them. <laughs> you definitely have to have <laughs> thick skin. Yeah, they, I mean, that's the thing. Right? Is like, but know, just know that yeah. if you're going to get into um, politics that and you're going to run for office... There's going to be a time and place where you're going to have to hit negative stuff, and they're going to look up everything they can on you. Try to find everything. And they're going to have right. an opso on you, and they're going to go all the way back, and they're going to find every little thing that they can find on you to use on you as a negative ad, right? Whatever is going to work, and and so, you know, um, with me, I didn't really have anything on me, so it's kind of like they had to make up stuff, right? Um, you were nice but, and clean. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, so I, I get it, though. I mean, you, they're not just going to allow you just to walk on in. I mean, they're right. going to try to find something or pick something or twist something or whatever it might be. To try to sway to, a vote. Yeah, to try to sway a vote. And, you know, in this particular case, it didn't work. So it's just interesting because, like, I always find it like, I mean, I think that's part of the worst part about politics is when you start seeing all the negative parts of it and you start seeing negative campaign after negative campaign yeah. after negative campaign. And you're like, can we just stick to our issues a little bit here? <laughs> um, yeah. You know, because at the end of the day, I mean, I get it. They work. They have to work or they wouldn't do them. Right? Correct. Yeah. So, like, that's why they do them. But, like, at some time, you're at some point, you're like, dude, it's like, 
merits, you know, can we just run on our, your merits and just, you know, what you are willing to do that you think is better yeah. than whatever it is, the person you're going against, right? And I think the thing is, is like, it just, it, frust- it frustrates me. And, and I know well, I think it frustrates you. And I think it frustrates a lot of people with right. the negative ads because, you know, I got a lot of feedback, like, you know, there were people that were upset, you know, that all these negative ads, it wasn't just me. I mean, it was in the other races as right. well. Um, it, was in, it was across the country. I mean, yeah. or, you know, even, even across the state, right? So, you know, this person said this person about this or this person said that. And it's like, I get it. I mean, obviously they work or they wouldn't be doing it or they yeah. wouldn't spend the money that they do. And they all do it. It's just like, I just like, part of me is like, that's, I, that's the part of the politics I don't like. And, mm-hmm. you know, and I was like, hey, look, I, you know, tell me why. Tell me why you're the good guy. Why are you going to come in and change things or, or that kind of thing? Um, you know, not because, you know, you're, you're a person over there, you know, slept with two other people or something like that yeah. or whatever it might be. Yeah. You know, and it's just, it's kind of, but, you know, I, I, Again, I that's the world. That's the world. Of so when is Chris going to run? <laughs> <laughs> I just told you. I was like, dude, I would sit there and it wouldn't be good for me. Politics yeah. would not be good for me. You no, know, it takes a certain individual. It does. I mean, you have to. I mean, you're putting yourself out there. I mean, just know that anybody that's going to run, you're you're literally putting yourself out there. Well, even for like a show like this, right? Yeah. I put myself out there, and, and yeah. I get people comment on my on like you know some of my posts or like they'll comment mm-hmm. on my stuff, and they'd be like total trash, or yeah. you'd be like all oh, boring or stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you get those people out there, and it's like you're not going to please everyone. No, you're not. You know, you're just not. You're not and it's like, not. and if you don't realize that you're not going to please everyone and yep. take it personally you'll never be successful exactly you just got to keep it moving and keep focus on your mission on what you have been called to do and what you're supposed to do and just stay focused on that like one one thing about me is i'm laser focused when i got my mind set to something i have goals i just go and i attack them you know whatever goals those might it's be funny you say that because i put a post on facebook today and it was about hustle, right? Yeah. And about whatever your hustle is. So your hustle yeah. was you to become the next county commissioner, Correct. right? And what I was, what people don't understand is, is that when I put a post, they think it's about about hustle is about money. Yeah. And it's not about money. <laughs> oh, it's about money, right? And that's the yeah. thing. It's like you wanted to do something to change what we had here, and that was your Correct. hustle, right? You Correct. were hustling every day. Yeah, your hustle could be whatever you wanted to be. Yeah. And I was just like, I'm sitting here, and like this person is like, well, you know, you need to, you know, you have this, and and I and I had one person that says, I, you know, I hate the hustle um, mentality, and I'm like, but your hustle could be whatever you wanted to be. What if it's your hustle is to be the best father or yeah. the best soccer coach to your son's team? Right. It could be whatever you want. It doesn't have to be about money. Mm-hmm. Like my wife, which is a bodybuilder, who likes to work out. Yeah. She don't make no money. That costs me money. <laughs> a lot of money. Right? And, you know, it's the same thing with like the podcast. The yeah. podcast, I don't make any money from this. Correct. I, it, but it costs me a good amount of money. Yeah. And so, you know, and... But it's like, you know, and that's the thing. I think everybody thinks that they're just in it for the money or they're in it for like the politics or they're mm-hmm. in for this. Right. And it's just like it's, you know, and, I, and that's the thing is like I think there's people out there like you and I believe even like me that want to do good, that yep. want to change things. Correct. Right. Part of the reason I do my post every morning is because I'm so sick of the negativity. The reason I do my podcast is because I want to share highlighted people that have been successful without all the negativity, mm-hmm. right? Um, you run into all this stuff, and I just, I, we, I feel like we live in a world that's nothing but negative. Like, people live on the negative. Yeah. And so, so like... At, that's what they feed on. You know, and that's, and, and it's like, I don't want to be in that world. I want people mm-hmm. like you in my world, yeah. right? You know, and, and, and that's the thing, and I think... Well, I appreciate that, Chris. <laughs> so, well, you know, and that's why, like, the people that yeah. I have on here <laughs> is people that are people like you that Mm want to do make a change whether it's in their business whether it's in the government whether it could be an actor right Mm -hmm. I mean that actor or actress she can be out there hustling doing gigs for nothing to build her business right because a lot of these actors and actresses that I have on my on my podcast sometimes they do a lot of stuff and they don't get paid for it Mm -hmm. right and so they don't realize that you know oh they're just an actor you know or whatever they're you know and they think but 
that's their hustle and that's what they Correct. like, right? So, you know, and that's why like for you, it's like, it's kind of nice and it's refreshing to see is like, you want to do something to help our area, our people, mm-hmm. our 420,000 people growing by every day, yeah. right? And really give back to the community and do something to say, hey, I'm here to help instead of, hey, you know, this is the way that we do it. Yeah. You know? No, I mean, that's it. It's just, you know, whatever you're doing, you know, do 110%. Like, don't leave it all on the table. Don't leave anything out on the table. Just give it everything you have. And that's what you do put with your, your campaign, right? Into it. You yeah. put everything into it. Because, like, yeah. I mean, like I said, I mean, I saw you everywhere. And you were just putting everything you had into this campaign. All those signs you saw, those that, that was all me. That put all those. Did those, you really? Big, those big signs. <laughs> There's are, ones that are, like, right next to our neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, all those big ones that you saw. Uh, I put up, like, 90% of those. <laughs> That's All a lot of work. County. It was a lot of work. It was a lot of work. I busted my butt in the heat, in, <laughs> in the, the heat, middle yeah. of this July heat, you know, putting those signs in. But, you know, and I had to knock on doors to get permission. And, wow. you know, it was a lot. It was a lot of work. And see, that's what in. I think people don't realize is yeah. everything that went into your campaign and everything that you went in to do what you did. Because, you know, you pretty much live and breathe and eat and sleep this campaign yeah right to try to to win i can only imagine like the presidency yeah like how the president and how much campaigning like donald trump how much campaigning i mean i can't even imagine it's non-stop it's literally on the either on the plane or on the bus like yeah. mine was just a little old county <laughs> i can't imagine what it's like on a national scale like I mean, you're it's probably traveling from city to city every day. Every day. Every day. Every single day you have a speaking engagement, you have to shake hands, you got to kiss you know. babies. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I can't even imagine, you know, like Donald Trump, I mean, he he worked, he works hard, right? That's one of the hardest working guys I've ever seen. And cuz I know what he's doing. Right, I I don't think I've ever seen anybody running campaigns like him on a grassroots. Right, because he's not a career politician. No, he's not. And I just saw him time and time again. He he would just be on the next bus, go to the next place. Be on the bus, get on, go to the next place. I mean, it was just crazy. I mean, he could probably he'd possibly be at like two or three places or four places in a day. Just doing speaking engagement. Can you imagine that? No, and that's and he, you're doing that not for six months. You're doing that for a year or two. Right. <laughs> that's insane. Just nonstop. And just you know, going that's at the it. thing is like, and then you got to also look at it, okay, from his age standpoint, yeah. having that, you know, okay, what's he in his 70s, 80s, whatever he's in, yeah. and you're doing that day in, day in, day in, day in. I mean, that takes... That's I mean, a lot. That's, that's a lot. It's Sunday. a lot of endurance. It's a lot of endurance. I mean, you know, and if you could do that, then I think that's like, okay, well, wow, he can, he's got good endurance. He can, do, <laughs> he can run, he can run the country. You exactly. know, so, you know, and um, I think, you know, that's one of the things people don't realize either is how much goes into all this. That's kind of why I wanted to have you back on the show yeah. because I don't think so many, you know, all the process and oh. all the campaigning and all the like events that you've got to put on and yeah. all the fundraising and finding all these support and then your poor wife's like going you yeah well she home? has to, yeah she's got the, she's got the kids too <laughs> at the right. house so I know. It's like, so it's, no i mean my wife gets so much credit i mean god bless her she she's an amazing woman and uh but yeah i mean it was a lot of work i mean the last two weeks of the campaign we made over fifteen thousand calls wow i mean we were on the phones i mean and i did that with volunteers but right. we were on the calls we were texting we were you know sending out voicemails. We were doing whatever we can just to get those votes. And let me tell you, I mean, that face-to-face interaction is, I mean, that that that's a game changer when you're able to do that and it makes a, so much difference in a campaign. So when the, the primaries yeah. were started, when you actually beat out Carol, mm-hmm. <clears throat> okay, I had no idea that there wasn't a Democratic person yeah so i didn't realize that there wasn't anybody there and i mm-hmm. was sitting there i was like well, okay well now he's got to go through the democrat and then i was like no there's nobody there i'm like what <laughs> and i'm like okay so you pretty much once you won you won that one you pretty much knew unless you got like, yeah a crazy i had a couple of write-ins, write-ins. Yeah. i mean i had a couple of write-ins that i was going against um but yeah that's the big race is the primary um typically in manatee county or red county 
they don't Democrats don't typically put up a, a candidate for an at large position um, or an at large seat. So you know, um, I think I won one hundred twenty three thousand votes is what I ended up with in the general election. Okay, that was more than Ron DeSantis. Oh wow! Oh <laughs> wow! <laughs> but of course, I didn't. They had Democrats. Yeah, I didn't have right. anybody going against me. But so that that's was, the difference. How, so. That was kind of cool too, because like, right? Was that? I mean, when you go to vote and for the when we just had a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. How cool was it just to see your name on there? Oh, it was a great feeling. I mean, just no, to see your yeah, name. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, this is me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was a great feeling um, to know that you know, uh, you know, because once, like I said, once you win the primary, you know, you you pretty much knew, especially uh, yeah, that, I mean, that one because you didn't have anybody. It's going very against unlikely you. that a write-in is going to beat you, right? Yeah, so I mean, you kind of knew, but like yeah. it's like you know, but you know, it's not you don't know until it's actually over for Correct. sure. I but. think we ended up winning like. Ninety three percent of the vote. Okay, of the county. So, I mean, and that's, well. that's got to feel kind of cool because I remember when I was voting, I saw your name there. I was like, "That's my buddy." Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "I know him. He's my yep. neighbor too." <laughs> I was like, so "Yeah, was no, it was cool. it was a great feeling." I mean, it was um, it was a great feeling knowing that you know that we were going to be able to to win this whole thing, you know. So, so what's next? What next is? Next, I know you got to sign in, right? Next, you got to yeah, swear in, right? Next but then Tuesday, after that, I, I swear in on the twenty second. So can and, you give us uh, any kind of what a, your plans work, are? Or work, my, I'm honing in on our infrastructure. Okay. Uh, I think that we need to really catch up with our infrastructure. I think once we fix our infrastructure, everything else will fall in place, and then economic development. Uh, those two, those two things are are on my radar. Number one is our infrastructure because we're affected by that every single day. We have to get in our car every single day. Mm-hmm. We have to possibly sit in traffic every single day. Oh my! God. So and it's even worse now. <laughs> snowbirds are here. <laughs> yeah. So I want to figure out a way that we can cut um, our time frame. Right. If we're 15 years behind, how can we? Question is, how can we cut that in half to maybe seven and a half years? Um, I knew anytime we're looking at things like that, it takes money. So we're going to have to be kind of creative in, in regards to. So what are you thinking? Um, you thinking ro- new roads? You thinking like lights? Which yeah, lights like, going to roundabouts like, or yeah. I mean, essentially roads um, that will have a st- more steady flow of traffic. Um, you know, roundabouts. You know, um, just looking at the macro picture of the county. And because that's me, right? I, I'm at large, so I'm not necessarily looking at. Um, I'm helping within the districts, but what I'm looking at is an overall picture of the county mm-hmm. and seeing how we can improve the lives, the lives of each citizen in the county, right? So that's like looking at the overall picture and the macro situation of the county and saying, how can we improve our infrastructure how can we speed up and cut down the infrastructure time frame of of it being built to where you know we can we can manage what's going on because guess what we still have people we're not stopping people from moving here right right they're going to continue to move here every single day and every year we're gaining more and more people so we need to really strategically look at the overall picture and see how we can approach it in a way to cut down our time frame of what used to be 15 years to maybe in half and so that's just kind of looking um looking at the overall picture and and talking to people and seeing what we can do to come up with a solution. I'm all I, I'm all ears. I, I don't you know, I'm not a know it all. I'm I'm not, you know, I'm gonna talk to the experts in regards to how we can do this. Right? But I have a mission. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I want to get here. Right. Show me how I get here. Right. Right. All right. And if it takes money or if it takes employees or whatever that might be that's that's how I'm going to go in because I'm not going to I'm not going to accept anything less. I'm going to say how can I get from this point to this point and how can I do it in a more uh, faster manner. So cool. Looking forward to yeah. it. This was fun today. Yeah, it was great, great Chris. Great. Thanks I for having me. Appreciate you having I appreciate me. Looking it. forward to watching you grow. We're looking forward to see how everything goes with the county. Yeah. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, it's gonna be fun to watch you. Yeah, so thanks. so how long do you hold the office now? Four years. Four years. So it's a four year term. Okay. So. Um, 
I hold that office for four years and, uh, you know, up for re-election after that. Awesome. So I'm looking forward to watching you. It's pretty cool to watch. It's pretty cool to know somebody who's like being part of that too. Yeah. It's like, it's kind of a fun thing. <laughs> so awesome. Yeah. I appreciate it. Well, thank you for coming on. Well, thanks for having me. All right. You can help support our podcast by checking out our real hustle gear. We have t-shirts, hoodies, tank tops, hats, and more. Let everyone know that you're a real hustler, willing to do whatever it takes to get the job done. You can check us out right now on realhustle.com. And right now, we are offering all of our listeners 10% off when you use the promo code PODCAST at checkout. Once again, that is PODCAST to receive 10% off your entire order.